Good evening, welcome to Simpson S7. Very few gave them much of a chance, but the Vodafone Fiji Mbati Rugby League team defied the odds and reached the semi-final of the Rugby League World Cup. We lost to a country that has played Rugby League for over a hundred years, compared to the mere 16 years since we joined the game. The Fiji Mbati inspired the nation, gave us something to hope for, and gave us all something to cheer about. You saw them play live here on MyTV and the documentary on their build-up. It is only fitting that we show you the joy and the emotion of their return. We are happy to present to you tonight the second part of Nongu Kolou, Nongu Vanua, The Journey Home. Enjoy. Monday, 17th November, 7.30 p.m. A United flight out of Sydney touches down in Nandi's International Airport. An exciting day as Fiji's Rugby League heroes return home after making it into the semi-finals of the Rugby League World Cup. It's been different, you know, it's been different to like sort of what I'm used to playing with back in Australia. The playing group's different. I think, I think we're a lot closer. I think we're obviously a lot more spiritual, a lot more faithful. I think that brought us together really well. I think that contributed to us, you know, getting a few wins. I think, yeah, it's been great. It's been a good experience. The players are tired and are still recovering from their Sunday night game against Australia. A touching traditional welcome by Wakasombu was presented to the Mbatis. This whole tournament is very emotional. Um, before I played um, against France, was, um, we were talking about um, uh, unity. Um, See, we sort of, when we come together, we had sort of had two uh, teams, like the Aussie base players and the local base players. And the local base boys are like, uh, they know a lot more about God than what we did. And um, so we sort of coming together, expecting uh, this, you know, this whole David and Goliath thing. We were expecting to have our stones then, but we didn't get our stones. We got something different. And that was um, Tala put into our hearts, and that it was unity. Yeah. An exchange of acknowledgement was made between the Mbatis and the staff of the airport. But the feeling of being back home and seeing their fans cheer and applaud them has given the Mbati a lot more to sing about. I wouldn't say you know all, all that holy, but um, you know, it truly opened my eyes and um, you know, really made me sort of you know, see the light and see that well, you know what um, you know, the spirit and God's spirit you know, does you know, does to a team and um, you know, does to, to, to the boys. Thousands turn up at Prince Charles Park to welcome the Mbatis back home. I mean, the celebrations are very, very emotional for me. Um, to come back and yeah, when we went, come back and we went to the field to see all those uh, kids in that, uh, when, you, when you watch them jump up and down, I oh, mean, it may have put uh, butterflies in my in my heart. It's something very close to me. Here, friends, fans, and family have been waiting anxiously. Uh, my shirt, my hat. <laughs> I gave it to some family in the crowd. We'd like to thank you. Um, God bless you and your family. 
We love you again. We love you. We got a lot of emails and um, from the news that we got, everyone in Fiji uh, really got behind the boys. The Mbatis themselves have been quite shocked with the welcome home celebrations, especially to a country where rugby league isn't quite that popular. Touching, man. Seeing all those people, all the fans, didn't uh, realise we had that much support in uh, Australia. Fiji's performance at the World Cup as underdogs prove themselves to the rest of the world. The celebrations will be emotional ones if they cross the line here. And they do! Fiji win! Yeah, I think it really, it really showed on the field, you know, how we did, how, how did we did fan down. Yeah, we really took it out of the field. And that's the second time he's had one of those floaters put up to him. Here we go again! The French fullback looks up and says, not another one! Oh, here you are, Tony! Has beat all and sundry! What a gem! What a gem! We were pretty nervous, pretty excited, we were confident. We, um, we went in as underdogs against France, no one had seen us play, but we knew you know, if we, you know, played as well as we could, we could, you know, we could beat them and I suppose that's what happened. And, um, yeah, we were just quite nervous, quite excited to get out for, obviously, our first game and, um, yeah, things worked out well. Gerald Hayne still going. Hayne's beaten two on his way to the line. He stops. He pivots. He scores. Oh, I felt good. I was laughing, you know. It was just a bit of a bonus, really, just trying to go out and try and get the win, do the best for Fiji and... Yeah, I think it's a bit of a bonus. Really inspiring, uh, awesome. A lot more, a lot different to um, to the last World Cup because um, I think the 2000 was a bit disorganised. But um, you know, this time around we were, we were well prepared, um, physically, spiritually, and mentally. You know. Fiji proved themselves to be a real contender in the Rugby League World Cup. We've been waiting for this, been for this for the last six weeks, and um, for the boys to come out and. The French going down to Fiji. Full credit to the Fijians who came out to play. They totally played us in the middle, in the, on the edge. So good luck to them, you know. You can't take away from them. And a team that believed that God was with them every step of the way. Uh, we're a pretty spiritual side, you know. Every morning, every night, before training after training, we prayed. We had a lot of faith in ourselves and in God, you know. And, the boy, all the local boys from back home, they were faithful and it showed tonight.